This episode of Powered by Women is brought to you in part by In Search of the New Compassionate Male. For more information, go to newcompassionatemale.com. You've heard of steam powered, horse powered, and gas powered rev your engine. And there's solar powered, man powered, and the old electric. Forget this, even though Dennis is directing this. This show is solely lunar powered by women. Hello. Welcome to Powered by Women. My name is Diane Call. I am your host of the show. And welcome to our mid-season recap of season two. And, you know, we are a bit over mid-season, not, not going to lie about that. But, you know, it, like we did in season one, it's just important uh, for me, you know, I kind of sit here as the host, but I am here to learn as a woman in this modern age you know, how do women navigate in this modern age? How have women navigated in the past? You know, how do we claim our power, accept our power, maintain our power, uh, not give it to other to others? You know, how do we do that as women? So, you know, it's sort of like in, in this, this chair here that I sit, I just feel like I'm in the, the learner's chair. And um, so I, I just think it's important at this point just to kind of, revisit the episodes that we've had, the women that we've had on the show and their stories that they've shared. And just to reflect and share reflections, what was learned, uh, what was clarified, validated, all of that good stuff. And, you know, I can't think of a better person as in season one, uh, I cannot think of a better person to have this conversation with, and that is Renee Jaworski, who is a producer of the show, director of the show, and, you know, doing many other things behind the scenes Thank for Tartan you. Media Network. I mean, talk about a powerful woman. Thank you. I don't feel powerful. <laughs> women often don't feel powerful. And when I was younger, I used to think that powerful and women that was kind of a bad match. You know what I mean? I didn't want to feel powerful. I wanted to be more yeah. dainty or whatever. I felt like that would be a bad thing, you know, to be well, a powerful Well, yeah, it's woman. kind of considered bitchy in a way, isn't it? Right? right. Yeah. You don't want to be the bitch, right? Like, so if a guy comes out, right, that's the double yeah. standard, like a politician, like a Donald Trump, he comes out and he says weird shit and all of that. And he goes crazy and everyone says, wow, what a powerful leader, you know? And then a woman does it and it's like, oh, she's a bitch. And I was yeah, told that in yeah. law school. I was actually told that I had male professors who would go, it would tell us, to, would tell the women students and would say, well, you know, you have to walk a different line than the men. And, and it was unapologetic. Yeah. It's just yeah. totally, you know, normal. Yeah. And, you know, to that point, um, I think for me, what, what I find is, as a woman, and it could be in many different roles in, in my life, whether it's, you know, uh, sister, you know, wife, girlfriend, you know, cousin, whatever, you know, because, um, you know, I have a soft voice, I tend to be very easygoing. And sometimes it takes that like, okay, okay. And then it's like, bah! <laughs> and then it all just comes out. It's like, that's it. I can't take it anymore. And then it sort of turns into aha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's exactly. Like being a bitch. <laughs> right, right. Sort of like, well, you sort of brought me to that point, you know, um, mm -hmm. just that, that, that fight and that struggle, I think that we women have, mm -hmm. you know, to be heard. Yes. And nobody, and, and you just touched on something really interesting that I always say a lot is that nobody asks if a woman has a bad behavior or does make a mistake. Why are we not asking a society why she made that mistake? Because that's right. important. And that's what you're just talking about right there. It's like, 
when you have an oppressed class, which women mm -hmm. are traditionally an oppressed class, when you yeah. have behavior that is rising out there, it's not to excuse the behavior, but to examine it and say, okay, why did a woman get to that breaking point? Who pushed her and how can we help to alleviate that in the future for other women? And those are right. the questions that a lot of people are not asking. But this show, first of all, having the word power in it mm -hmm. is so cool. Power and women are both in front and front and center in the title which i love yeah but also this particular season in season two you really went specifically with a lot of your guests about womanhood what it means to be a woman what it means to be um in society and how society treats women expectations for uh women's bodies yeah. women's behaviors things like that and it was so cool for me because when I was directing, a lot of times I would have to just divorce my feelings from what I was doing technically to support the show because I did want to cry mm -hmm. so many times, particularly during this season, I felt a common thread of women saying there are certain standards that society is making for us. And I, as a woman, mm -hmm. don't feel that I can ever rise to that standard. And so I'm constantly being told I'm less than. I can't measure up to the, I mean, Wendy, Wendy Dumond was talking about the airbrushing and how yeah. she has to actually sit out on social media sometimes just because mm -hmm. there's that barrage. Olive went really deep into the modeling and fashion industry. Yeah. And, and how it shrinks women. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's interesting because I think what I was feeling was anger, you know, on, on mm -hmm. my end of it, you know, it's like, Oh, that stuff is still going on. I, I was feeling anger, and it's interesting. You were feeling the sadness. sadness, and those two really exist together. You know, we were just kind of experiencing, you know, either. Yeah, and that's another thing is I feel women aren't allowed to be angry. You know how if a man mm -hmm. gets angry, people kind of look and listen. If a woman sometimes gets angry because she feels she needs to keep upping the ante until someone will listen to her. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you have to repeat oh, yeah. yourself or even raise your voice. I've even tried it as an experiment. I've even feigned being angry in work settings in my past. Mm. Really? Yeah. So that people will actually stop and let actually listen to me. And it's sad because at a certain point I'll say to myself, well, I don't want to be that person. Like, I don't like what that does to me to yeah. have to act that way. But I do know that that double standard is exhausting. I'm 40 years old. And as I get older, it becomes more exhausting to be inauthentic and to try to live up to mm -hmm. society standards for how I should behave. And I saw, and, and I think that's why I felt sad during a lot of your episodes this yeah. season yeah. was because I sensed a lot of tiredness in women with, you know, you talk about the images that women are portrayed like in the media and everything mm -hmm. is fake. You know, and, yeah. and you had a conversation. You had you had that conversation multiple times. Jessica, it's all good. Talked about the ugly girl thing. Yeah. And oh yeah. After that episode, I was telling every man I was encountering for the next week, I was like, "Don't judge," because a lot of men will say, "Well, well, women, you know, I don't need to compliment a woman's appearance because I don't want to feed into her value being." her physicality. And I'm trying to say, okay, well, we mm -hmm. can fix all that later. But as of right now, women still need to be held in that dynamic to be to, like, Jessica, it's all good talked about what that means to her. And to just tell it to just affirm a woman's uh, physicality, no matter what she looks at looks like, is so helpful for us on the inside. And I wish I could paraphrase what Jessica It's All Good said about that. But basically this ugly girl thing, it hurts women yeah. when we feel yeah. that our weight or our complexion or whatever, it ties yeah. into our value. So anything that men can do to sort of help to support us in that, I think mm -hmm. would be fantastic. And, you know, I think the, the what I got from Jessica's episode to, and, and among others was how she took that pain and just transformed it into something beautiful, mm -hmm. you know? And then you, you look at her today and she is so centered and comfortable in her own skin. And it's mm -hmm. almost as if that whole value of physical appearance just kind of went out mm -hmm. the door for her. And she just kind of, 
you know, she focused on, on, on the internal more and right. Yeah. I mean, we women have such a balance with that, you know, and me, I'm in my fifties, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I start to get looked at differently because I'm Mm -hmm. older, you know, and it's almost like the value decreases and, you know, my own internal battle with that is, is to push back. (laughs) How do you deal with that? Like hell, you're going to diminish me, you know? (laughs) Well, you have a song where you have a song that literally says the music stops. You say, go on and underestimate me or. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. Of that line every day, actually. That's really inspiring to me. Yeah. And I think it does happen to us as women, you know, regardless of, you know, how somebody may judge our appearance, may judge mm-hmm. our age. There does tend yeah. to be that, that underestimating that goes on and, yeah, I, I just, I, I get angry. It's like that lion in me comes out, you know? <laughs> so do you think, so you, in a way, just like we were talking about with Jessica, so your response sometimes to that oppressive feeling is actually to fight back? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, you know, if I could identify where it comes from, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know other than, you know, I guess somewhere deep down, I'm just thinking, okay, well, who else is going to advocate for me, but me, Mm -hmm. Yeah. you know, and to push back, I think is not necessarily pushing back on the person, but it's pushing back on that fake ideal that I know that Wendy and I talked about in in that episode about Mm -hmm. women buying into that fake ideal. And it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard not to buy into it. It's really hard. And I think one of the toughest episodes for me to watch was Olive's episode because yeah, um, when she talked about how the fashion industry, how the modeling, particularly runway, and her experiences there and how damaging oh, yeah. it's been to specific women and then also to the culture, which is what gave rise to her reason for wanting to create All of Us Media which embraces it's more body positive it's it embraces a more diverse Mm -hmm. and realistic natural view of womanhood and you know she talked about the eating disorders and the medical issues and she went very detailed into what starving yourself for the industry looks like medically for your body what it literally does and she i i just sat there and i was just the whole time i i'm behind the scenes and i'm going don't cry you know, don't mm. cry. And then like after the episode, I cried, but I, yeah. I, it's just, yeah. So there's so much that women, women, I feel are carrying so much. And I remember now this is a season one callback, but you had, um, Coylin green mm-hmm. and she performed shame, which was mm-hmm. a new song, one of her newer songs at the time. And yeah, man, we were all just crying because yeah, it talks about, what women have to go through every day. And that's what I'm talking about, the weariness. And I think by the time we hit yeah. middle age, like you and I are both in this middle age thing, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's just your your answer, I guess, is to fight back is what you said. I'm yeah. still kind of exhausted and I, I want to get the energy to fight back. But it's yeah. so cool because I think there's an authenticity. Like season two, I noticed, I kept writing down when I was writing notes, Every one of your guests was so authentic. Yes. Authentic. Oh, yeah. Every single one of them. So I won't name names. Every single one of them mm-hmm. came as she was. Yeah. And I yeah. was so inspired by that because they were the antithesis of the plastic yes. society that we were all talking yeah. about. And you're so yeah. authentic too. And it made me want to be more authentic. Yeah, I think we as women need to be true to ourselves. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to Kim Pyron's episode where, you know, the day was just one thing after another. And there she was in her that, car. Yeah, you yeah know? she was in her car for the, for the episode. <laughs> that was so cool. And that's what I, I love about that episode is I, I just, I loved that, um, that authenticness, that rawness is like, here I am. Take me as I am. <laughs> I'm outside yeah. the store. I'm about to go in. And she's talking about divinity and about how she's a medium. And she's talking about all these spiritual things. But then she was also talking about temporal, real world, here and now, which that was a cool episode because her being in the car 
talking about her day and then talking about divine femininity. And I remember her saying to you, um, when you cry, that's the divine. When you laugh, yes. that's the divine. And your reaction was so cool when she said that. You were like, you really had a reaction to I'm that. getting it now too. I'm getting the goosebumps as you're repeating that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true, isn't it? It is. You what know, about that struck you? Because I was meditating on that for so mm -hmm. long after that episode that the, that the divine feminine is in our laughter, our tears, our everyday yeah. experience. To me, you know, it's, it, I think, okay, I've got all these thoughts going on at the same time. <laughs> I, I really think that women have this power. We have this innate natural power to face our feelings, to move through our feelings. You know, mm -hmm. we, we tend to not squash. I mean, there's always exceptions, but I think mm -hmm. there's such strength and power in that and that divine feminine is so many different expressions so many different emotional expressions and sure. so that, that's what i got from that is i just think that is the natural power that we women have and it kind of you know it's like that one of my least favorite phrases is when people say okay, you just gotta power through you just gotta power <laughs> through this and to me, what that means is, you know, sometimes you have to put the emotions aside. And mm -hmm. I've certainly had to do that in my life. But at some point, those emotions are going to come back. Right. And I think that's where the real courage is. I know Am Taylor was talking about this. You know, that real courage is just to face what's going on on the inside. And you move through it. You know, I, 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 I do think that men struggle with that because they're not conditioned that way. Mm -hmm. You know, that yeah. was a very long answer to your question. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sitting in it and I rem I'm, re I'm remembering Am Taylor. I'm so glad you brought her up again because she's that episode. And I remember when she was being interviewed by Dennis uh, as well, there's something about her mm -hmm. where like, she'll talk about science. She'll talk yeah. about music. She'll talk about like, and I was just so inspired by, again, going back to this genuineness. Am, Am Taylor is an example of a woman who shows up and you know who she is. She mm -hmm. is showing you with her body language, with her tone of voice. Mm -hmm. She is, it seems to me that she's so comfortable being Am Taylor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of women, a, a lot of a woman's journey, or at least for me, and I have heard other women say this, is trying to be okay with ourselves. So a lot mm -hmm. of that comes from society's ridiculous standards that are not yeah. even natural. Oh yeah. And then a yeah. lot of it is just always being interrupted or pushed down or, you know, you have to work twice as hard to get half the credit, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Am Taylor, I mean, I remember when she was setting up, uh, this is like behind the scenes stuff, but she was working with her lighting. She was working with the set, how she wanted the set to look. Yeah. And I'm watching her and the way she even moves her body, the way that she expresses herself, and then certainly in her music is so honest mm -hmm. and she's so Am Taylor. And like you say Am Taylor and you know that's Am Taylor. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I, maybe it's the Gemini, I don't know, the Gemini in me or something, but there's something there that I haven't been able to achieve that yet. And Jessica, it's all good is another great example. I mean, yeah. Jessica shows up, you know who she is. She's yeah. very comfortable in her own skin. What was your journey like as a woman with that? I mean, is that kind of a female thing? Um, you know, it, it, it really just reflecting back on those particular episodes and uh, you know i i'm including um wendy's episode and mm -hmm. gwen and kathy's episode you know yeah. okay gwen o'looney <laughs> a woman just so comfortable in her own skin and a woman who's had to contend with that kind of patriarchal power structure and making such headway and just, you know, being unapologetic because she exactly. had her mission in mind. 
and then there she is getting, you know, uh, comments about her hair or the, the, the yeah. wardrobe that, and, but watching her just kind of go, <laughs> almost like shooing it away. Like it was just a little gnat really mm -hmm. struck me, you know, and like I was talking about for me, my tendency is, is to get angry and to get like, you know, that that's wrong. And we, and we need to change something about it. And I'm not going to accept that. Mm -hmm. But there was something about Gwen that I mean, she kind of just, that's ah, just a little, yeah. Next. Really <laughs> like not giving struggling. power to that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That really, really hit home to me. And it's something I'm trying to do better at, but it's hard. You know, I'm half Italian, so that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I mean, Ukrainian. Imagine, the imagine the Ukrainian in me. Where's my gun? <laughs> no. Yeah. But it's, yeah. It's you've like, got that whole other. Yeah. Kind of, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah with what's going the, on today. What's going on today in Ukraine, you know, um, and a lot of Ukrainian women and the and the diaspora, you know, helping. Um, it, it reminds me in a way of, of a metaphor of what women have been going for. If you, if you just, you know, you think of Russia or Putin's Russia as being patriarchy, right? And you think about how Ukraine is responding in a defensive move, you know, not really just sort of holding their own. I think that would be a good template for what we could do when you're talking about anger. I come from an activist background as well. You know, I'm, I, I get those feelings. I feel yeah. so angry by injustice. That's why I went to law school because I wanted to be able to do something with my anger. Right. But then there right. are times like the Gwen Looney example is where's the threshold where if you cross the threshold, you're actually empowering the negativity. Right. And there is a crossover there. There is there a is, time where, there. and it's hard because I feel so, yeah. ang I feel, I feel like, and a lot of women, a woman said to me the other day in my women's group, she said, I feel angry all day, every day. Mm. And Ooh, I was like, I was, and I thought about it and I thought, um, maybe well, there was another uh, thing too. Abundant Artists, which is um, Olivia Chiaccia's show, she does these live shows, and she invites people to like go within, and she does meditations, live meditations. And mm -hmm. I remember she was she was doing one, and I saw in the audience a woman. I won't say who it was, but she said, "I never realized how angry I am." all wow. the time until I yeah. did this exercise. And then yeah. what do I do with that knowledge? You know, that makes so much sense. It, you know, and I've been thinking a lot about anger lately. <laughs> <laughs> I really have. Yeah, me too. You know? me and too. it makes me wonder because how many women walk around with anger and they just don't know it. Right. That was the lesson. Yeah. yeah. And, and for me, I know I, I walked around with that for a long time and not realizing that's what it was. Well, and, and, and the activist you know? in me says, and, and the rational person in me says, okay, take any person, take a man and then make him live like a woman in that he's mm -hmm. getting paid less for the same work. He's got to try twice, twice as hard to get half as far. People are talking over him all the time. I, what does that, you know, we would study as society what that does to him and we would say, well, he's being abused or whatever, but we're actually doing that to half of humanity all day, every day. And yeah. so what is it doing to us as women? Yeah. What is it marinating yeah. in that anger or, mm -hmm. or just resentment? What kind of resentments do we have that we're not even being honest with ourselves about? Right. Because it's unacceptable. And it's unacceptable. to Yeah. Do, yeah. And I think, you know, <clears throat> I spent a number of years just not, not allowing that to come out, not even quite realizing it was there. Right. And, you know, I was physically sick a lot more often, mm -hmm. you know, tired a lot more often. And I think, you know, if we as women don't feel that fire in our belly and accept mm -hmm. it and go, I have just as much right to have this fire as a man does, because, you know, sure. we, it's just, it's just a basic human emotion, right? You know, when it gets down to it, it doesn't have to be so exclusive to one and not the other, 
you know? Exactly, exactly. And yeah. another thing I remember Gwen Aluni saying that has stayed with me and that I think about almost every day since your episode with her and um and Kathy is, yeah. is she talked about how back in the day when she was, you know, I guess she was mayor or whatever and s- someone came to work for her in some capacity and then showed up and said, oh, you're a woman. You remember that? I do remember that. And, yeah. You know, yeah. and then it changed everything. Like the fact that she was a woman meant that she was somehow not as worthy as a politician had. I mean, it's just, and you're right. And when she, was, and when she told that story, she took it. So, you know, but yeah. for me, I thought, gosh, if that happened to me, I would be so angry. Right. I know we need, we need to learn <laughs> from, you know, just internalize that. It, it's just a little gnat that we need to just kind of swat away. Bop it away. Yeah. 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 And not feel it so deeply, but I think it's hard for us women to not feel things so deeply. Yeah, exactly. And, and also can we find good and healthy ways of accommodating these emotions without truncating them or trying to minimize them? You know, there's this whole idea of the hysterical woman, you know? Right. Yeah. And so a lot of times, you know, it's sad, but a lot of times I see, I see men and they're getting really into their emotions and society Mm -hmm. takes it as a sign of strength sometimes, or it's okay or whatever. And I'll want to have an emotion and I'll always say, no, 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 you can't. You're, as a woman, uh, how is that going to come across? You're going to be the hysterical, bitchy woman. And so I'm, what is that doing to women who are tamping right. down our authenticity every single day? Like, I don't even know medically what that does to us. I don't even know. Yeah. And, you know, from somebody who's done that, you know, it, it, mm-hmm. it does take its physical toll. Right. You know, and, and I, I think the the science is there, too you know, that when they talk about cancer, right. It can be from a lot of internalized anger. That's just been, you know, being held within. And then it comes out physically, you know, for looking at kind of even the spiritual point of view, some spiritual beliefs about that, you know, well, yeah, I could just say for me, you know, I was, I was sick a lot more and just tired, you know, I guess that ties in with your, when you were talking about being exhausted. It's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting. And one, one of the great things that powered by women always does, but I feel like at this point with season two, with the particular guests that you've had, there's something so healing about women talking with other women supporting other women, validating other women's experiences mm-hmm. and hearing our own experiences coming out of the mouths of another woman. Yeah. How incredibly powerful that is. Like for me as a woman, I'm sitting there, I might be directing the show or whatever. I'm in the background and I'm listening and I'm watching two women that I really respect, you know, you and whoever your guest is. And you're talking about things that I might have felt like I was the only person on the planet who ever felt those things. Yeah. And suddenly I feel validated and suddenly I say, okay, well then I'm not that weird. Well, okay, maybe I can talk about this too. Yeah. Yeah. It releases that shame, doesn't it? You know, the shame going back to the Corey Lynn Green song. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, one of the things we've talked about even before, you know, the first episode aired was, and I know I talked about this in, in Wendy's episode of, it's that delicate line between validating a woman's experience, which we will always validate a woman's experience, right. mm-hmm. and then not going into the male bashing right. territory. But then sometimes it's like, well, you know what? Sometimes <laughs> we're going to teeter on that edge because we have to. And sorry, guys, you know, listen. And if, if it affects you some way emotionally, reflect on that. Because that, Reflect that means, on that. Deal with you know, that. Yeah. Something going on there that, that can be learned from, you mm-hmm. know? Um, yeah, it, it, there's that fine line, isn't there? <laughs> well, right, because we tend to coddle men a lot. I feel like yeah. as women, we do tend to coddle them. Yes, there's a lot of like, oh, let's not upset the man who, you know, whether he's the boss or your husband or your son, it's like, let's, 
no, no, no. They're very delicate in a way. They're stronger than us, but they're somehow more delicate and their emotions are somehow more valid. And I, I don't, it's a right. lot of coddling yeah. and I find myself doing it all the time. Oh God. Yeah. And I catch myself oh, yeah. and I'm like, why are you treating this man like he's a child or something? Right. But I see it. But women talk about this, that we feel, I mean, if a man behaves badly, they might go, you know, the media or people will question the mother, the wife, what, whatever woman was involved with him, they will go after him, her as being responsible for his behavior somehow. So women take a lot of, mm-hmm. um, we're under a lot of scrutiny for how men behave sometimes. And yes. Yeah. Is it, yeah. I mean, we do have to check ourselves. Yeah. I have to check myself all the time. And, yeah. you know, when I was preparing for Wendy's episode, that's when I was, that's when I just sort of came to that realization of, you know, I, I really think for the longest time I was like, no, we're not going to mail bash and we still won't, but mm-hmm. yeah, we still need to talk about some hard subjects. And mm-hmm. I love that men, watch the show, listen to the show. And, you know, our hope is that we all learn together, Mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, there's going to be some uncomfortable things said and that's (laughs) life, you know, that's just life. (laughs) What I I love too is the diversity about the lineup, the specific lineup that you've had so far in season two. I was thinking about the, how diverse it was. So you have these common threads of things you're talking about with women's experiences. A lot of the the topics we're discussing now are topics you discussed with your certain guests. And it was so cool for me to analyze the commonalities and then the differences. Like every woman Mm -hmm. that you interviewed had a unique spin or unique experience or unique, unique take on the same, so it was like these different mm-hmm. shades of womanhood, these different shades yeah. of femininity and how we're tapping into that, you know, spiritual yeah. ways, artistic ways with music, with business, with fashion. And it was so cool as this kaleidoscope of truth where each woman oh, is plugging that. in. Thank you. This, each woman yeah. is plugging in her own experience. And then we stand back and we get to see this great diverse picture of what womanhood is and how similar it is for all of us and mm-hmm. then how each woman is bringing back like different experiences and then we're kind of having this this huddle together yeah and oh, learning. I love that. the kaleidoscope yeah. of truth yeah and that, that that's absolute i could not say that any better so i'm not even gonna <laughs> try <laughs> the word kaleidoscope is just really cool that's a little, <laughs> if you could just Put fit that, it yeah. into any conversation it instantly makes the conversation cooler it's so much better than the word tapestry you know which oh, is the yeah, word yeah. i would tend to use i, I like, like tapestry too though yeah <laughs> i feel like they're both a little different yeah but they're the same idea <laughs> And you know, it, we've got to wind down here. I, I, oh, I'm looking man. down at my clock and oh my gosh. Um, Remind the know. people to go back and watch all the episodes so you can hear what we're talking about and reacting to. Watch all the episodes. Yes. You will cry, you will laugh, you will learn a lot. Yes, Oof. yes, yes. And I'm, I'm still learning. And even from this conversation today, you know, my yeah. wheels are turning in, in different directions, you know, than, <laughs> than they were before, which is another reason I love having these recap episodes. Oh, me too. It really gives us a chance to share what's been going on yeah. in our head and our hearts and our souls while we're taping the show. Yeah. And to you bind know? it all together into these experiences where we're elevating all people, not just women, you know, people who identify as everything under the sun, we're elevating, I feel the consciousness of all of humanity by Mm -hmm. doing by having these conversations. And like you said, there are some conversations that are maybe unpleasant or uncomfortable, but get out of your comfort zone, men, I'm looking at you men, but also women, look, I have to go out of my comfort zone too, with powered by women, there were a lot of things. Like I said, I cried, I had, I had a lot of emotional responses deep within myself. Yeah. But on the other side of that fear, on the other side of that comfort, you know, that you, you expel from your life, there's, oh my gosh, there's so much greater wholeness mm-hmm. and satisfaction with the human experience that we're, we're living. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Good. So if you could, this is going to be tough. Cause I don't even know if I can answer this question. So <laughs> let's just see. Ask it. If, if, 
um, I'm ready. could you summarize in one or two words what you've really gleaned from this season so far for, for yourself personally? For myself personally, it's like get over society standards, yeah. be myself, find out, like go away from the screen, go away from social media for a minute, go deep within myself, say, who am I? Who do I want to be? And then stay on that path. Yeah. Take Maybe take some media breaks like Wendy was saying. Like, oh, yeah. Stay in your truth. Be more like Am Taylor because I do want to be Am Taylor when I grow up. And, um, and just be okay with, or don't just, for myself, don't just tolerate being a woman, embrace being a woman. Mm -hmm. And then I get to define what that means for me, which yeah. is so awesome. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. And, you know, I think for me, um, the word accept Mm. acceptance of who I am, not acceptance of the fake ideal or the cultural expectations, right. but acceptance of me, because that's where it all starts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the external, it's, it's the internal. And, you know, I think, again, just going back to Jessica, that really just resonated with me how there was mm. so much pain on the outside and she just went within and and she radiates now i mean just right and, and doing such and using creation. humor the way she uses humor and she's a clean comedian and so she channels yeah. everything into positivity and you say gosh I, and that was inspiring to me because when i feel when i'm having negative experiences i don't feel like being funny or positive <laughs> right, she found right. a way to be funny and positive and fabulous and gorgeous yeah. while yeah. she's assimilating all of that into her experience so wow. yeah yeah awesome. and that that's where to me that's where the power is mm -hmm. is you know not giving it to somebody else right you know, don't give away it. our power claim yeah. our power yeah. thank you that i it's that, progress, you gotta end on it? that that's i don't know there's nothing you can say yeah. better than that that is so cool <laughs> well we're gonna have to because i know we're out of time <laughs> <But>. <laughs> But yeah, and it's, you know, it's a work in progress. You know, I, I could go on and on about how I give my power away, you know, and then it's like, oh, why did you do that? You know, <laughs> every day and it keeps, yeah. you know, it's like water in your hands. It just keeps. And at one point you look down and you say, well, my hands are wet, but I don't actually have the, what I could have had. So it's yeah. so important for women to say to other women, hey, you give, yeah. you know, it's a slippery slope. You start giving your power away in this one area. Before you know it, there's nothing left of you. Mm -hmm. and, and women right. give and give and give until there's nothing left. We will give and give and give. Women are are givers. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and we need to give back to ourselves. And you know, that's th that is um, you know just one of the tenets of this show is right. to focus and and to and to nurture and to highlight and to validate and. Mm -hmm. Renee, we're, we're going to have to do this again. Bye. We'll do it again. Yeah. We'll thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so, so much. I, I appreciate you so much. And okay. I could talk to Renee and I wanted to talk to Renee longer, but you know, we're trying to keep the show to a certain amount of time and my goodness, we've got, um, I don't know about three episodes remaining of season two. Well, let's see what's to come and how that, continues the conversation about how we women not only recognize our power, nurture that power, claim that power, maintain that power. And uh, boy, I, I certainly have some ways to go and I cannot wait to learn more <laughs> from, from our guests. And um, thank you so much, Dennis, Renee and Clay for making the show happen. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. Do something nice for yourself. Do something to lift yourself up. Do something powerful for yourself today. Bye-bye.
This episode of Powered by Women has been brought to you in part by In Search of the New Compassionate Male. For more information, go to newcompassionatemale.com.